And uh, we checked our plan documents and we said, well, you know, son of a gun, we don't seem to have any monitoring information for the early period, certainly of that. And so this class was qualified and there was a class added up through, the we pick this out? I think it goes through the entire period. The class that was actually added didn't, wasn't limited to... Uh, this one, I classes. believe, was merged into the other yeah. two white okay. SECs, I think, 43 to 47 and then 48 to 57. Yeah, okay. right. I think, I, think, I think what happened, you're right, I think what happened is originally we said, well, we know for sure we can't do 43 through 46. Right. And that one went first. And then ultimately it, it, we concluded for the rest of the period also. Yes. Okay, now if you want to do uh, a spec petition for this, you would have to do like the firefighters. Mm -hmm. okay. They cross back and forth to X10 and Y12. But yet you just want to do it for firefighters. Would you have to file a petition for Y12 firefighters and for X10 because it's two separate yeah, if you want to cover all those people and they went back forth, you would have to file two petitions. Okay, I love this. I love yeah. <laughs> um, I found radium in the solar ponds and also in 910, the Port of the Evaporators building. So if radium was there, and well, radium was also in 452 in the pre engineer building. I don't know, it'd have to, it would have to be... Uh, it would have to be ra radium that was introduced by the ra by the DOE activity. Yeah, the solar ponds were where they. Uh, well, I mean, but I know with solar ponds, you know, but was was the discharge the only source, plant potential source of radium for that? It, it, it would be something. On STEM, some, if they came from the environment. It, STEM all only includes toxins that are made by the site, right? I don't know. That I, would in be fact, a some, question. Some that'd be You're a question. Not uh, I I really can't speak knowledgeably about the Senate. I, I don't know about that. Hmm. What about the other radio nuclei? So why, my our XM petition, you know, they had they had sufficient monitoring data for plutonium, uh, pretty much through the period, but the other radio nuclei had XM, the exotic. Okay, so it was qualified and. Uh, Evaluated and passed the board for the SARS on the on the other exotic okay. Yeah. So now what do we do if we're looking at exotics and we've got lots and lots of records from our clients and what should we look for in there? The lack of Neptunium or the lack of uh, Neptunium would be a good one. So, but we're not finding that in the um, records. So, you, does that mean they were not? If they had Neptunium <laughs> there. Uh, and there is no monitoring for Neptunium, that would be... Uh, so we need to find the Neptunium. Well, or just, you know, find you know, evidence that it was there. And, you know, the, uh, the legacy reports that you can pull up online, where they do the characteristic inventories, they won't give you amounts, but they'll give you that it was on site. Yeah. 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 Yeah line at night on a dial-up connection and downloaded <coughs> the DOE's own reports about characterization for the site. We included all the radionuclides when they were characterizing tanks and ponds and things. And I turned those over to Paragon and Paragon could not tell me no because it was DOE's own report. Yeah. Okay, um, another example, let's see. Um, the petition proposed passes all employees of New Mac Apollo from 57 to 83. Uh, they, the petition basis they proposed is we had not yet completed a, a site profile for the site. This is one bomber complex. Yeah. Uh, so in this instance, the fact that we hadn't written a site profile doesn't fit one of the criteria for qualification, but. Uh, when we got the petition, we, re we recognized that, you know, we don't have any monitoring for these folks from 57 to 36. And so, um, there's a, yeah, there's a particular uh, bioassay contractor who did work for some people uh, back around this time who uh, was con 
convicted later on of uh, uh, dry labbing the numbers. What that means is they is didn't actually US do testing? the analysis, they just wrote them down. Is that U.S. testing, part of the U.S. testing thing? Because uh, that's what happens. And uh, so they, uh, so we said, well, there is a basis that we have found for this site. It's not the one they suggested, but there is a basis. So based on that, we help uh, the petitioner get that in there and, and, uh, and get the petition qualified. And I don't know the entirety of the dates, but I know class has been added to this site. Uh, I want to ask you, can somebody who has got lymphoma, whose uh, pipe wells have been uh, polluted from the runoff from the Iowa Army Ammunition Plant, is there any recourse against the government for that? Well, not our program. Uh, the, the exposure occurred at their home, uh, not on a covered facility. And, uh, but is there any recourse where they can apply for any kind of program? You see? Boy, do you know of anything? What I do know is that I don't know of any program that does that, but I do know that there's a lot of litigation at this point going on for PI, property damage. Um, I have some, you know, some attorneys that, uh, from New York that specialize in that, and they're actually in all that. And actually, in the Newback area, Apollo and Parks, there was a lot of property damage, and they've been successful for that area. Yeah, and and been going on forever, and all the families but, but as far as any sort of government program, I'm not aware of anything. It's a private tort. It's a private tort. So, it's so private private tort. Tort. you guys don't speak up any time. There's so much argument. That's why I know that. It's a private tort. It's a And it's polluted uh, uh, the Skunk River, and the Skunk River runs into Mississippi, and it's running into Mississippi. I mean, that's a, that's a legacy. I mean, this, this has left a legacy all over, not just well, with the employees, but. but um, yeah, I'm. I'm Aquifers are contaminated now where different cities got their water from, and uh, it's it's a mess there. I uh, I I'm not aware. Of it. Uh, I apologize, but I barely know what I need to know about this. Program. <laughs> <laughs> For the groups of workers that were non-union, and I run into this quite a bit, or they were not the standard contractor, where they they casually went on to the sites because they had to for their job. Um, what I'm told in one particular case from um, from Tennessee is that, well, you have to prove every day that he signed on to the site, whereas we know that his job was setting up all of the phone and computer lines at the fuse wrap sites for their security. He also did um, uh, at Oak Ridge, he, he, and he was in Y10 and uh, in, in the buildings, in the same buildings where the admin <coughs> people got sick at Oak Ridge. He set up their phones and computers. That was his job. He was, it was he had the security clearance to do all of that. And what I was told for his claim was, you have to prove every time you went on to those, and we'll give him one day for every day you prove you went into one of those places. And when I contacted the security people and I said, show me his security clearance records, they said we destroyed them after five years, and he'd been dead longer than five years. So how do you, I mean... That's a Department of Labor issue, honestly. I mean, it's the same issue with couriers. We have people that were in panel trucks that clocked in maybe to Savannah yes. Riverside, mm -hmm. got in a panel truck and went across the country. And then when there's an SEC disqualified, the 250-day clock, because the way the language is written or the way the Department of Labor talks about that is a facility is a building or a structure. They're not counting the... Eight hours. It's not eight hour day. It's a contact. And so, I mean, that's really DOL issues. And I hate to this, but we probably ought to let Steve finish the SEC stuff just if we want to stay... Well, the question is, would those administrative type workers with that type of contact, because they weren't monitored adequately, would they qualify for an SEC? If they don't... If you can't prove it employment. No, they, they, they well, they prove that he worked for the contractor. They can't prove the contact employment. Well, I mean, it's time after. What makes him a qualified They're worker? They're calling every, every time he signed into one of the sites that has an SEC, it's a contact day. And he has to go through. So to meet the 250 workday requirement, he's going to have to actually, and that's good. So because the interpretation of this a lot of times, again, with the Department of Labor, you run into that, too, is because... I've got somebody that was at Y12, X10, and Clinton Engineer Works, and this was a little iffy, but we had somebody that was actually a housing inspector and a chauffeur. Sure. 
but you couldn't really figure out where, and this was, you know, prior to Acts 10. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing. Right, so they, they weren't counting the days. They said, well, maybe he had 200 days in Acts 10, and the remaining amount were, were at the other two sites. So you couldn't really count that as a 250. It gets really, really tricky when... The way the way it's administered, so I think yeah. you have to yeah. be able to sh to prove. But see, this, the there, when I approached the Department of Energy for his security clearance, because he had to have a badge to go to these particular yeah, places, <coughs> and they told me we destroyed all those records. So isn't that document destruction? Um, they were on schedule. The, so. the issue that that's going to come up though is even if a class were added, okay. DOL determines uh, number of days worked, and so you'd still be back at the point of time.